Hello everybody, so I'm a little sick. I work with kids and sometimes they can be nasty creatures, so bear with me through this video. In honor of MLK Day, I wanted to play a video of Bernie Sanders describing the time he went to the MLK March. A lot of times we know that, yes, he did in fact attend the Martin Luther King March, but nobody really knows a whole lot of details. So I'm actually gonna play you guys a video of him describing those moments and why he was there. We're standing in front of the Lincoln Monument today, uh, one of the most beautiful buildings in our country and one of the most historic. And today, the area is filled with tourists, but 50 years ago, uh, there were several hundred thousand people here to listen to one of the most memorable and important speeches in the modern history of the United States of America. And that is the famous Martin Luther King Jr. speech, I Have a Dream. I remember that very well, not by simply seeing it on TV or reading about it. I was way, way back there, one of the several hundred thousand people uh, who was here. I came in on a bus from the University of Chicago uh, where I was then going to school. I remember the day very well, uh, and I remember the, the moment, the, the period well, because up at the University of Chicago, where I was then going to school, we were working uh, with young people in the South. There was then an organization called SNCC, uh, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. We were helping to raise some money uh, for their efforts to uh, desegregate the South at the same time as we were working on issues uh, in Chicago. I think as we reflect back on this very, very great man, uh, certainly one of the great uh, leaders in American history, we understand that in one hand, we have come a very, very long way in achieving his vision of a country which, in which there's far more racial justice today than there was in his lifetime. Uh, many of the barriers of segregation have been broken. Uh, I think he would have been very surprised to know that in the year 2013, not only would we have an African-American as president of the United States, but that gentleman would have been re-elected. So in that sense, and in many other areas, we have come a very long way. We have a right to be proud of our accomplishments. But on the other hand, let us not forget that what King was talking about was not only racial justice, he was talking about economic justice. When he was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee, he was there not on a quote-unquote civil rights demonstration. He was there working with mostly African-American garbage collectors, people who were being exploited, people who were earning inadequate wages, people who had terrible working conditions, and he said they deserve justice. So often we overlook the worth and the significance of those who are not in professional jobs of those who are not in the so-called big jobs. But let me say to you tonight that whenever you are engaged in work that serves humanity and is for the building of humanity, it has dignity and it has worth. He was working on a major project called the Poor People's March, not just for African Americans, but for whites, for Hispanics, for Native Americans. And the point that he was making was that in a great country like the United States, we should not be spending huge amounts of money on the military when we had children in America going hungry. We should not be having the kind of income and wealth inequality that we had, where so few had so much and so many people had so little. And the truth of the matter is that 50 years later, in many ways, that aspect of King's dream, the economic aspect, is not only not better, it is probably worse. Black unemployment today for young people, youth, 40 percent, more income and wealth inequality today than existed during King's period. Six hundred billion dollars being spent on the military today when we have a lot of people struggling to purchase food or to pay for prescription drugs. All right, well, that was pretty interesting. Hopefully you guys got something out of that. Now, let's break down a couple interesting points about the video. So first things first, he was a student at the University of Chicago. He was a member of SNCC, which is the Student Nonviolent Coordination Committee. And so what they're trying to do is end segregation in the South, along with helping some of the turmoil going down in Chicago. And 
some other points that I thought was interesting is how he connected the issues going on in MLK's day with the issues currently going on in today's day and age. For example, the inequality. Literally, the wealth inequality gap now is higher than what it was during the time of MLK. That's pretty wild. Fun fact about that, actually, the wealth inequality now is at the times of what it was before the Great Depression. Think about that for a second. Right before the Great Depression, the inequality gap. When we were kids, we learned about this and we're like, yeah, there's rich and then there's poor, more or less. Well, it's worse now than it was at that point in time. Fun fact for you. And all of this was according, by the way, to UC Berkeley professor Gabriel Zuckman, and it was published by the National Bureau of Economic Research. Fun fact for you. Anyway, back to this. In addition to this, MLK discussed the Vietnam War and the prioritization of the military over social welfare. Do I need to say anything? That sounds about right, right? Yes. The Afghanistan war right now is 18 years, and it's going strong. The Vietnam War was 20 years. There's literally kids right now, 17 years old, who were born after the war that are fighting in the war overseas right now, just for some perspective. The point with everything is that we've gone a long ways as a society. However, there's still a lot of improvements that we absolutely have to make because there's some things that we're still battling in today's day and age. You don't have to vote for Bernie Sanders. I respect your view. That is fine. However, Bernie Sanders and MLK, their legacy should inspire us. That can show us like, look, this is what happens when people decide to stand for their principles and make action for a social cause, for a larger cause, for everybody around us. Right now we have social media. We have the ability to talk to more people. We also have the internet. We have a better ability to be able to access information. So we have the information and we have the people. All we have to do is have the inspiration and these two people can help us cultivate the inspiration within ourselves. Hence why I wanna make this video right now. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. If you did not, sorry, happy MLK day, live long and prosper.